I grew up in the south of Tunisia, in Gebes, a middle-class family of seven children. My parents never went to school. They worked really hard, and they sacrificed everything to give us the best education possible. Because education is the only way to have a better life. I love my hometown, but I always felt it was very small for me. I had bigger dreams. I wanted to be an astronaut. I loved books. I would read, and I loved math also. I would reflect on infinity, think about the future, and wonder about time travel. I never thought at the time that about 100 kilometers south of my hometown, the movie Star Wars was being filmed in the city of Tatooine, home planet to Luke Skywalker. It was a no-brainer a few years later, when I reached 17, 18 years old, that I would go and study abroad in Europe. When the opportunity presented itself to have a scholarship in Germany, it was a clear yes. My parents, from a conservative family, were extremely supportive. It's not an obvious thing from a small town from the south of Tunisia. I did my MBA in the Netherlands. I traveled a bit around the world. And I was always passionate about technology and science fiction. I was passionate about AI before it became relatively sexy nowadays. Most recently, I attended MIT to understand from the best in the world about how AI is going to influence our world, its impact on the business and the companies. My favorite movie of all times is Matrix. Who else? <laughs> yeah, baby. I remember the first time watching it 25 years ago and feeling my mind cracked open. It was absolutely mind-blowing. I never imagined that our reality would evolve in a way that is extremely transformative, profoundly transformative and different. I never imagined that the future that I was dreaming about would be here right now. The future that I dreamed about as a child is right here, right now. Not because of the matrix, not because of time machines, but because of artificial intelligence. AI is transforming the world right now. We talk about BC and AD, right? What if I tell you that we're going to start talking about before 2025 and after 2025? Artificial intelligence is changing the world as we know it, and we are at a stage where it's either going to take humanity forward or it's going to deepen the divide. We are at a turning point in history of humanity. Every leap in technology had the opportunity to either lift humanity or widen the gap. The agricultural revolution created immense wealth, created societies, but also created the social hierarchies. The Industrial Revolution created an immense wealth, but concentrated power in the hands of few people. The Digital Revolution connected the world, democratized information, but created the digital divide. Three billion people today have no access to Internet. With these revolutions, we had time to adapt, to discuss, to debate, to correct course sometimes. They took thousands of years, hundreds of years, or decades, not with artificial intelligence. It's happening super fast. Think of the difference between filling it a bathtub slowly versus a surge of a tsunami that hits you. That's the difference between the speed AI is changing the world today and the speed the previous revolutions changed the world. It took 100 years for electricity to reach 100 million users, 100 million people. You know how long it took for ChatGPT to reach 100 million users? A bit longer. <laughs> eight weeks. In eight weeks, 100 million people were using ChatGPT. It was the fastest adoption of a new technology ever. So we're not talking about years or months or even, you know, it's eight weeks. So it's not just progress, it's hyper-acceleration. 
we're seeing, for those of you who are following what's happening with the AI, we're seeing breakthroughs on a, every single week. I'm going to leave you a few, with a few of them. Some of them are scary. Others are very promising. The CEO of OpenAI, he said, AI is going to be or is the most transformative technology humanity has ever developed. But AI is not magic. It's simply a machine that learns. It has been trained on hundreds of terabytes of text, billions of images, terabytes of data points. It has read every book ever written, every scientific journal, every image ever posted. It has learned and been trained on all this massive content. It's a reflection of us. It was trained with our data. It's an image and mirror of all the great things we humans did, but also all the bad things and all the problems we created on this planet. AI has an immense promise, huge power, but also very serious risks. That's why I decided to speak about AI today, not as an engineer, but as a mother, as a human being, because we have a responsibility to understand AI, to get involved in shaping it, in joining the debate about how is it going to be impacting our, our society, our, how is it going to be impacting humanity. AI is designing new medicine, discovery of diagnosis, creating immense value for the health, healthcare sector. In businesses, it's transforming entire sectors, automating processes and workflows, and creating immense value for industries. It has the potential to be used for civ civilian use cases, but also military use cases. Containing this type of technology is extremely difficult, and it's extremely challenging for us. That's why we can't leave it to just a small group of people. 80% of the R&D research and development in AI right now is done by a handful, by very few corporations worldwide. I actually love AI. I'm passionate about it. And I am an optimist. You know how many people are actually, how many experts are actually developing AI right now? Two million people worldwide. Two million AI experts are shaping the future of humanity worldwide. Half of them are in China. Europe has 150,000 AI experts. That includes data scientists, engineers, uh, machine learning uh, experts. 22% of these 2 million people worldwide are involved in AI. The key message I wish to leave you with today is AI is not just for, for engineers and data scientists. It's for all of us. It's like electricity. It's going to change the world. You can't say, well, you know, I'm not from the field. I'm not a technician. It's going to impact your life, whether you like it or not. It's going to impact all of humanity. So we need to get involved, and we can't just have it, leave it in the hands of the AI experts, the engineers, and the scientists. We need everyone to join the conversation. We need ethics professionals, sociologists, who can discuss and debate and explain how this is going to impact our society, and how can we do so while keeping our value system. We need policymakers. We need uh, business leaders who are implementing AI in an ethical way into their businesses. We need educators. We need healthcare professionals who use AI to leverage the power of this technology, not to create more profits, but to heal people, to bring value to people. The CEO of NVIDIA said recently that today is for the first time one person is able to create a $1 billion company with AI without even needing to be an engineer. If you are able to solve a problem, you are able to create a billion-dollar company. So we need these entrepreneurs who are truly using AI to solve, the, to solve real problems of this world. Goldman Sachs predicts that 300 million jobs will be eliminated by 2030. The Industrial Revolution did the same thing, but more jobs were created. For students, it's important today not to study 
um, or to study something and to focus on the skills that they need, which AI cannot, cannot do. It's not about knowledge anymore. It's not about know-how, because that's available. That's readily available. How many people are using AI on a weekly basis? Raise your hand. OK, very good. So then you agree that you have in your pocket an expert, a legal expert, a medical expert, a science expert, a technology expert. You have an expert in your pocket, and you have access to all the answers if you know what questions to ask. Whatever you do today, AI is going to be impacting your life. And if you're not using AI today, you're missing a huge opportunity. We need to embrace this change. We need to understand what it brings to us, but we also need to understand what do we need to do as a society to prepare for this change. When you have this expert in your pocket, what's happened is that we are outsourcing the very act of thinking. Let me say that again. With AI right now, we are outsourcing the very act of thinking. Now, we here happen to be a generation who has learned to think for themselves. We've learned that. We're not going to unlearn it so easily. How about our children? How about the next generation? When they're going to grow up in a world where AI readily brings every piece of information, and don't get me wrong, it's not just about information, because the internet brought us that information. We're talking about a machine that reasons, so it actually emulates what we humans usually do. Once we know that, we understand, we understand that we got to do something. And I am from the field. I'm an engineer, I understand what's going on, I do a bit of coding here and there as well, although it's not my, my primary job. But I see that the whole conversation is happening among experts. We're like in a bubble. Where's everybody else? Where are the educators? Where are the sociologists? Where the, the policy makers are catching up? But you see two speeds here. You see the technology evolving at a very fast speed, and you see the rest of the society is going slowly, very slowly, very little debate, very little understanding of what's awaiting us, what we are expecting. Whether you are from the field or not, whether you use it today on a daily basis or weekly basis or monthly basis, it's going to change your life. There will be the before and after 2025. And we're not even talking about AGI. AGI is the Artificial General Intelligence. That's a totally different ballgame. We're talking about AI as it is today. So the question is, how do we prepare as a society? What are we supposed to do? You can't stop it. The genie is out of the box. What do we need to do? Educate ourselves. It's AI literacy. AI literacy is not about becoming an engineer. It's not about understanding the bits and bytes. It's not about you know, understanding the details of it. All you need to understand is, what is this? What is artificial intelligence? How does it function? How does it work? How is it going to impact my life, my work, my privacy, my data, my children, my future? We all need to understand that, every one of you. We all need to get involved, everyone, young and old. If our children grow up in a world where all the information is available, will we be having a generation or the start of generations that don't even know how to think for themselves? They don't know how to seek information. They don't know how to challenge information. They don't know how to seek the truth. Because everything is delivered to them. And remember the bias. The risk is there. So that's why what we need today, we parents, we need to understand how it works, but we need educators who understand how to use AI in the classroom in a way that teaches the children to make use of it, but keep their capacity of independent inquiry, of curiosity, of thinking, to build their cognitive abilities, and 
to make sure that we are not going to create a world which is just guided by the few and not able to think for themselves. We are today at a pivotal mo moment for humanity. Our generation holds the key. Holds the key to whether we're going to use AI to lift humanity or to deepen the divide. Use it to empower ourselves and our cognitive abilities or to surrender our thinking process to a machine. Every one of us needs to go home and start studying, if they didn't do already, start studying what artificial intelligence is, how can I use it, how is it impacting my life. You need to embrace the responsibility. You need to join the debate. You can't say, I didn't know, because it's our responsibility to make a better world. Because remember, AI doesn't dream, AI doesn't love, AI doesn't feel the music, doesn't fight for meaning. We humans do. Thank you.